Hey everybody, I just wanted to hop on here and explain the directions for this assignment. So first you're gonna need your StoryWorks magazine. Okay, let's go ahead and grab your StoryWorks. You'll open it up to page 22. We're gonna read a story called Newsies. And this story is written as a play. It's written as a drama. When you open it up, you'll see a photograph in black and white, so you can infer that this took place in the past. Okay, and the big idea, or the main thing that I want you to take away from reading this story is what's the theme? So we talked about theme in December. Theme is the moral or lesson of a story. So what does the author want you to learn from this? Over here is a cast of characters. It has characters and then it has each of the characters' names. And it gives a little summary about each one. So you have three narrators. You have a crowd, of course, so the whole class would read at that part. Annie is a 12-year-old girl who just moved to New York City. Then you have Rose, Sully, Boots. They're newsies. <clears throat> and that's just kids who sell newspapers. Then you have a manager a man in charge of the newspaper office, man one, man two, then William Randolph Hearst, a newspaper owner. Okay, so what you would do is if we were reading this in class, I would assign you a character. And when I assign you a character, that's called a cast of characters. These are the different elements of drama that I'm going over. All right, then you open it up to page 24 and you'll see something called a prologue. It looks like the heading at the top. It's the very top left-hand corner. A prologue is where the curtain is closed. When you go see a play, the curtain's closed. Maybe an actor or a narrator comes out on the stage and they just give you a little synopsis of what the story is gonna be about. They paint a picture in your head and they say, hey, this is what's going on in our story. Then you have scenes. Scenes are before the curtain closes. So you'll have a scene then the curtain closes, then they open it back up. Sometimes they use that to change setting. Remember, settings where the story takes place. So if you look at scene one, it says a newspaper office in New York City. Well, as they're reading that, that's where you should picture this going on, okay? What a newspaper office would look like. Scene two, later that day, so it's the same day. And then scene three, it's telling you this takes place in 1899. So it takes place well over a hundred years ago. Then you have the next morning. So this is pretty much taking place in the, all on the same day. Then scene five, you're in Central Park. So that's that big park in New York City. Scene six, you're at the Brooklyn Bridge. We're still in New York. So these are all in the bold print is where is the setting. And that's where you want to picture it taking place. And the epilogue, if you see that on page 27, okay, in red and in yellow, it says epilogue instead of scene one, scene two, scene three. And that's where the curtain closes and, it, and someone walks out and then they kind of just end the play. As you're doing a walkthrough and just kind of getting an idea, gauging an idea of what we're going to be reading, you'll see some captions. Remember, captions are what go with a photograph. So the first one I see is kids at work. It says, in the late 1800s, and I'm on page 24 at the bottom, in the late 1800s and early 1900s, millions of children went to work. They earned money for their families. Some sold newspapers on the street. Others took dangerous jobs in factories and mines. And then at the top, you see a really busy looking city. Notice how there's not any cars. There's just horse and buggy. Packed with people. In the late 1800s, many people came to New York City. The smells of food and factory smoke were in the air. The streets were very crowded and often very dirty. So I'm going to now flip it over to the next page on 26. I see a caption and it's got, it looks like three kids who just look so pitiful and they're almost stuck down in like a hole. It says, nowhere to go. Many kids slept in empty buildings or even on the streets. Oh, that breaks my heart. And then page 27, I see another photograph with a caption. And the caption says, a changing world. The Newsies were part of a larger change in America. Around that time, all kinds of workers, including many kids, began to demand better treatment at work. Okay, so now we're getting a good schema about what we're about to read. We're about to read about children who went to work over 100 years ago and how their life wasn't nearly as easy as it was for me as a kid or is for you right now. So what you'll do is you'll open this up 
you'll open up your story works we just did a little walk through everything it says directions and i'm going to post the youtube video of me making it right now right there number one you're going to watch the schema video so it's going to talk about newsies you'll just click on this url when you click on the url it's going to ask you are you a student you'll click yes i'm a student then it's going to ask you what's your classroom password your classroom password is right here Newton third. If I get a text today that says, hey, I don't know what my classroom password is, that tells me you did not watch this video. So I'm just going to say watch the video. Okay, classroom password, Newton third. Then number two, listen to the read aloud and follow along in your magazine. So I just talked about that. You're going to click on this link. It might ask you to sign in again. You're a student and that is your password, Newton third. And then after you're done listening to the story being read to you, you're going to complete the questions on slide three through seven. Now, do not miss any questions because I feel like I'm going to have a lot of partials on this because you guys just halfway answer things. You don't read the directions. Go through and read the directions. Okay, it says in scene one, what changes about how much the newsies pay for newspapers. So you're going to type right there under section one. Same section. There's a There are one two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight questions. And then the very last part asks you to drag a check mark to the statement that best describes. So really nine questions. Okay, watch this video because it's giving you the directions. Then you'll watch the schema video. Then you'll listen to the lady as she reads. And then you'll complete questions one through nine. Okay, if you have any questions, let me know. Make sure you do watch this video all the way through.